Okay, thank you, Professor Datta Gupta, for a nice uh, introduction. And uh, let me begin my talk by thanking organizer for giving me an opportunity to uh, discuss some of my recent work uh, in this uh, beautiful conference. Uh, already it is going very nicely and a uh, lot of things to basically know about uh, recent uh, state of the art experiment. So and, uh, I basically hail from uh, the uh, nonlinear dynamics background. So the main, main uh, the motivation behind looking this problem was uh, to look at some sort of instability, especially in a spinner BEC. And, uh, and the, then we basically got into many interesting, uh, and the, uh, interesting facts in this uh, uh, spin half uh, spinner BEC. And, uh, and the, uh, today my main uh, focus will be to talk about uh, different sort of uh, excitation spectrum uh, that we get in uh, this uh, spin half uh, Bose-Einstein condensate. So, uh, so far we have uh, uh, heard the talk uh, related with this, uh, how to, uh, how to, how to, uh, to look at the light matter interaction, how, to, how using light we can uh, basically manipulate uh, the spin orbit coupling uh, inside the matter. But uh, now I'll focus. Uh, now I'll uh, uh, focus mainly uh, on some of the aspect in this ultra cold atom, where this spin orbit coupling is basically engineered uh, using the, uh, the light. Uh, and, uh, so and I'll discuss some of the aspect of that also, and how uh, those engineered uh, spin orbit coupling play a very important role uh, in order to, uh, to bring out many exotic physics. Uh, in the system, we'll discuss about those things. And uh, this work that I'm talking about, uh, this is mainly contained in these two references. So and, uh, you may have a look to those uh, for details. So this is the plan of my talk. <coughs> so I'll briefly first discuss about uh, Bose-Einstein condensate. Many of you are already aware, but just for completeness, I'll uh, just uh, Mention few of the interesting aspect that uh, uh, when we have the many atom at very ultra cold temperature, how can we basically understand those aspect? And uh, those uh, things can be governed by this uh, uh, gross Petersky equation. So I'll a little bit introduce about this uh, main field model. And uh, then uh, I will first talk about the inside excitation spectrum uh, for very simple system that is uh, in the scalar BAC because in that case uh, in the, what uh, you will see that we can have the exact uh, derivation about the excitation spectrum and we can understand the things. So as we go further and further for the spinner BAC, uh, we'll find uh, that calculation becomes quite uh, uh, difficult as well as uh, the understanding is not quite uh, the linear thing in those cases. Uh, so just to uh, put up the proper base, I would uh, like to dis uh, discuss about this excitation spectrum for simple BEC system. And uh, then I'll introduce uh, this aspect uh, that uh, how the spin orbit coupling uh, can be observed in the laboratory experiment. And this is uh, totally synthetic uh, spin orbit coupling that we'll be talking about. So here, what we'll see that uh, this spin that we are talking here, it is some sort of pseudo spin. It is related with the density of uh, atom in a particular state. And that, that we couple with the motion of the atom. Uh, so continuing in that direction, I'll discuss the excitation spectrum of uh, one dimension spin orbit coupling, uh, coupled BEC because uh, that will give us uh, uh, some simplicity in the problem and uh, will help us to understand uh, this excitation spectrum for spin orbit coupled system. And then uh, my main focus will be to understand this uh, different sort of excitation spectrum that we get in uh, 2D uh, SO coupled system. And further I will uh, complement uh, those uh, observations that I get from this analytical solution uh, using uh, a numerical solution which is basically, uh, which is basically in the based upon solving the gross petersky equation for this spin orbit coupled BEC. So, uh, so with this, uh, I just uh, want to highlight that uh, we uh, get the Bose-Einstein condensate 
uh, that is totally quantum mechanical effect and it happens when we cool the, the system uh, at a very, very uh, uh, low temperature. So this is the velocity distribution, uh, the temperature very high com uh, compared to the critical temperature. So here we can see that uh, uh, particles are distributed uh, all along the velocity. As we go near to the critical temperature, then uh, the particle is started accumulating uh, at uh, zero velocity. And further, uh, it's a very, very low temperature compared to the B, um, the critical temperature, we get uh, this uh, high accumulation of particle at uh, the zero velocity. So, the, so in that way, what we get uh, some sort of coherent state that initially uh, these uh, atoms basically the have the, the uh, maxwell boltzmann distribution in the velocity. And then uh, the, at, uh, at certain temperature, we start getting the collapse of those atoms in a particular uh, momentum state. And uh, that continue as we go further below the temperature. And uh, in that case, what we get that uh, we condense the, um, the atom in a particular momentum space. So especially it will be in the gaseous state, but uh, in, the, in the momentum space, uh, in the, we have the condensation. So this led to the, in the Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree, yeah. Because uh, theoretically, I'll be talking about zero Kelvin, that's why I wanted to introduce those things, but I agree that aspect. So, so the, uh, this led to the, uh, the Nobel Prize, uh, the, uh, the, uh, two Nobel Prize, one was to cooling the temperature and then further to, um, to obtain this uh, BEC in the laboratory experiment. And the physics behind it, it is quite simple. It is based upon the wave particle duality of, uh, the, of the system. So at a, the, if temperature is very high, then uh, all the particles look like a billiard ball. And uh, the, once we start cooling the temperature, then you can see that uh, the, there is associated wave uh, the, uh, that, is, and that becomes, become, becomes quite prominent because uh, interparticle separation uh, basically keep on decreasing. And once it becomes of the interparticle separation becomes of the order of uh, this uh, the Broglie wavelength, then uh, we have the formation of uh, this condensate and that can be described by a macroscopic uh, wave. So, uh, so basically, uh, as a theorist, uh, we basically consider the situation then when we don't have any temperature and uh, so that we can describe the system by a macroscopic wave and uh, further we can uh, proceed for the mean field equation and uh, can get some insight about the system. So, uh, so to begin with, what we consider that system is at t equal to zero, so it is perfectly in the coherent state and, uh, and uh, then we can use the mean field theory and uh, can get the dynamical equation corresponding to the condensate wave function. So this looks like uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation. So this is the nonlinear interaction, uh, basically that comes into the picture uh, when we consider uh, this uh, macroscopic wave because it consists many, many particles. Uh, so, the, so, uh, so this is uh, just the energy. This one is the kinetic energy, and this is the nonlinear interaction that uh, we are having. And uh, the, to begin with, what I'll discuss, I'll, disc I'll consider the situation when we don't have any external uh, potential in the system. So I'll be talking about homogeneous Bose-Einstein condensate. So now, the, uh, what happens uh, if you ask to any experimentalist? It is very uh, the challenging time for them to get the condensate in the lab because they use uh, different uh, technique for that. One of the, the important technique is uh, time flight technique. So where they trap the atom they, uh, and then they suddenly uh, remove the trap and it gets further cooled and uh, they get the condensate for some time. Yeah, and the, uh, so and the, I just wanted to highlight those aspects also because you have to release the uh, trap. And then uh, and the, in that time, uh, one need to know about this excitation spectrum, what kind of excitation spectrum is can, it can have. 
uh, and uh, due to that motivation, we basically study this uh, excitation spectrum uh, for uh, this condensate condensate system. So here, what we basically uh, do that uh, we have the wave function, and uh, uh, we consider that uh, this is the the uh, wave function corresponding to the uh, uh, stationary state. And then in that we add some uh, perturbation which is uh, delta phi. And uh, in the, uh, this is the form of the, in the stationary state uh, in the condensate. And uh, in the, for the homogeneous uh, uh, case at, at the stationary state, this wave function uh, will be in the, uh, equal to root of the density of the condensate. So in the, uh, So, so right now it is the three dimension because we are talking about uh, homogeneous case. Yeah, yeah. So, in the, uh, so in that case, uh, uh, what we can, uh, what we uh, we have to do that we have to put this psi, uh, which we have written as uh, uh, the, the stationary part and the perturbation part. Uh, into this uh, in the equation, and we'll have to uh, look at that uh, how this perturbation uh, basically uh, grows with time. So, in the, uh, in the, so, this is the linear perturbation technique that we are using in order to ascertain uh, the, the stability of the condensate. So, what we can uh, see here that uh, in the, uh, if you put uh, put this. Uh, uh, in the perturbation in this uh, equation, then this and this part are quite trivial. But uh, in the, if you look at this uh, nonlinear term, so the, uh, so this will basically contain phi uh, plus del phi mod squared. So that uh, uh, we can uh, in the, uh, write it as uh, phi plus del phi phi star plus del phi star. This will be in the mod uh, in the psi squared term that we have, and uh, then psi we can write it phi plus del phi. So uh, here uh, we can see that this will become uh, mod phi square and, the, uh, and, the, and uh, uh, this one will be phi del phi star uh, and this will be del phi del uh, phi star and, the, and uh, then we can have this uh, del, uh, mod del phi square. So in, the, uh, in that case uh, we are only interested to look at the linear uh, perturbation and want to see that uh, whether uh, the system is stable for the linear perturbation or not. So we'll be ignoring any term of del phi which is hi, uh, higher than the linear term. So in the, if you ignore this uh, del phi square, so uh, this the whole term can be written as mod phi square del phi plus phi square uh, in the del phi star plus two uh, phi square and the, uh, del phi. So uh, here uh, in the, uh, we'll uh, uh, put, uh, put back uh, in the, uh, the, uh, this term uh, in the, in, uh, into this equation and can uh, get the, the uh, equation for the, the uh, for this delta phi that will look like i is cross del uh, del phi by del t and uh, uh, the del phi term will come here and we have this uh, g mod phi square will come and then one extra term uh, is coming from the back calculation that uh, this g phi square del phi star and uh, we are considering the stationary state uh, so the, uh, one term will come with the mu and uh, we have this uh, del phi so now the, uh, uh, this is the, the perturbation that uh, we are talking about it's a, a linear perturbation and uh, what we uh, basically see here that uh, the, the original equation here uh, that is the gauss petersky equation uh, in presence of interaction uh, in the, that uh, support the momentum conservation. So in the, in, uh, to basically follow that one, we apply uh, in the, uh, this kind of, uh, in the, uh, part of uh, this, this form of this perturbation. This is just like a superposition of two wave, two plane wave. Uh, one is uh, right, uh, plane uh, right going plane wave, another one is the left going plane wave. And that will make sure that uh, momentum will remain uh, conserve in the system and uh, the amplitude of uh, this uh, in the, uh, in the right plane wave in the is u and uh, the, the and, uh, in amplitude of left going plane wave is uh, uh, v. So now in the, uh, uh, another thing that we can uh, get from the gauss petersky equation that uh, in the, uh, since we are considering uh, the homogeneous uh, uh, in the situation so at the, in the stationary state we have this relation uh, in the mu equal to ng because n is here uh, mod psi square 
So the g psi square is equal to mu that we'll be getting uh, the, by using the stationary state uh, the condition. Now task is the, that uh, we will uh, put this uh, delta phi uh, in this uh, the equation and now we'll be looking at uh, coefficient of uh, the, this e to the power i k dot r minus omega t uh, and e to the power minus i k dot r omega t uh, in, the, in this uh, in the equation. So, in, the, uh, so in, the, in this case, uh, in the, if you look, uh, collect the coefficient of uh, this uh, uh, right going plane wave, uh, we get uh, in the, this equation h cross omega u equal to h cross uh, k square by 2m plus gn u plus nv. Uh, that we get uh, by collecting the coefficient corresponding to uh, this uh, the term. And uh, similar, uh, we can get uh, the coefficient of uh, uh, the left uh, the going plane wave also. That will just be the uh, imaginary part of uh, the, uh, this uh, uh, u and uh, v in the equation that we'll be getting. So once we have that, uh, then we have the another equation corresponding to the, the conjugate part of the wave function. So, uh, so again, we'll put uh, this form into this. So here you can see that uh, coefficient of uh, uh, this e to the power i k dot r minus omega t will give us the equation on uh, the, uh, v, and, the, uh, and that uh, and that's the thing we are getting here. So, the, so now we have the uh, two uh, two equation, basically four equation, but uh, only two equations will be independent. On u and v, and other two equations we'll be getting for complex conjugate of uh, u and v. So, the, so once we have these two equation uh, at hand, equations are linear or non -linear? Uh, so the, you can see here this is linear equation that we are getting. Right. Linear because we are using a plane wave perturbation, so we'll be. Uh, the contribution of that, that uh, I, I want to Phi. Phi. Phi one. This one. Yeah, uh, so, but, but you can see here uh, that uh, this is uh, phi uh, star square. So, and the, uh, the, uh, this will uh, and the be same, uh, 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 this is like a phi. Linearizing about delta phi, and phi, and phi square is coming, I'll be using the stationary state solution. That is simply n. So, your goal is to, tar uh, target is to study the stability of the stationary solution? Yeah, linear, linear stability. Linear stability. Yeah. stability. Yeah, yeah. So it is just the linear stability that I want to get. So then I have the two uh, set of dynamical equation on the coefficient of uh, uh, left uh, um, plane wave perturbation and the right plane wave perturbation. And uh, the, uh, once we have that, then uh, the, uh, we can write uh, the, into this form. So what we get that uh, the, uh, this is the perturbation amplitude. And uh, for uh, the non-trivial solution, uh, this uh, matrix uh, and determinant uh, should be zero. And uh, once we do that, then we get uh, omega equal to plus minus uh, this uh, epsilon zero k represent here the energy corresponding to the, uh, uh, to the stationary state when we don't have any uh, interaction. And uh, then we get this another term. So the, what we get, that we get the two sort of uh, the, uh, frequency through which uh, uh, the, the perturbation will uh, oscillate. Uh, one is positive frequency, another one is the negative frequency. And uh, the, through this, uh, one important uh, uh, the, uh, conclusion we can make, that uh, suppose if you look at things uh, for very, very uh, small k, then you can see that this term is going like k to the power four. So this term we can ignore compared to uh, uh, this particular term. So in that case, omega will be proportional to the, the wave number of the perturbation. And, uh, the, and this thing uh, can be shown that it is the, nothing but the velocity of light uh, in, the, in the condensing, the velocity of sound in the condensing. So what we get that uh, the, for very, very small perturbation, we have the phonon-like uh, mode that is getting generated. It's a long range. And the, uh, and the, uh, perturbation, uh, long wavelength uh, mode that is getting, getting generated. And uh, this is the feature for uh, superfluid helium also. Uh, there we get uh, this kind of, uh, the presence of this kind of uh, long range uh, and the, uh, mode. So and the, uh, through this, uh, what we basically observe for very small perturbation, uh, it will behave like a, the, uh, 
the condensate uh, and uh, we have the, the usual propagation of the sound wave and that we generally get in case of a solid uh, system also we, where we have the long range uh, uh, interaction. So, so this basically uh, uh, give us an idea that uh, in presence of uh, interaction uh, for very small perturbation it will behave like a condensate. But uh, if, we, uh, uh, if we look at the things for uh, uh, very high the value of k, then you can see this term will dominate and it will act like a free particle. So condensate will get destroyed. So through this, so what we uh, what kind of idea we get that depending upon the perturbation, we can have the transition from the condensate behavior to uh, the, the non-condensate behavior. So, uh, so this is the feature uh, for the frequency that we get uh, for the left uh, wave perturbation and right wave perturbation. And uh, now um, the, we'll be interested to know about uh, this kind of uh, um, the mode also that uh, how, uh, uh, how this uh, U and V uh, will behave. And uh, this is a feature of the eigenvector. And uh, um, the, I want to just discuss this thing uh, um, the, in this context because it is easier to get uh, insight uh, uh, for this simple system. Once we go to the spin orbit coupled or spinner system, there we'll find that it is not so uh, trivial to uh, get any insight uh, for, through the analytical solution. There we'll have to take help of numerical uh, uh, simulation. So uh, what we uh, can basically again do that uh, we have the two sort of uh, two branch of the frequency. One is the positive branch, another one is the negative branch. And uh, these are the, uh, the values. So we can uh, basically get the, uh, the solution of this uh, U and B corresponding to the positive frequency and the negative frequency. So for positive frequency, uh, uh, what we get that uh, we can uh, plug this uh, omega value into that uh, equation. So we get uh, this U plus equal to minus NG by delta and delta is uh, uh, this quantity. And then uh, since we are uh, using the perturbation uh, for the condensate in which uh, uh, the total uh, the density is conserved. So we have to implement conservation of uh, uh, the perturbation amplitude also. So we are taking u square plus b square equal to one. This is just the conventional thing. Uh, uh, many place they take u square minus v square equal to one also. But uh, the both will give you more or less same result. So, so from here, uh, what we get, we get the, the perturbation amplitude V and, uh, and the U and, uh, and the, uh, another and the approximation we can uh, basically see that when uh, this uh, NG uh, the is of the order of uh, this term delta, the, then uh, the we can uh, get here V plus will be 1 by root 2 and U plus will be 1 by root 2. And this will be uh, applicable for uh, the very, very uh, low perturbation in the wave number. Why is that? What is delta? Del delta is this uh, in the energy that I have defined. When you say U square plus V square, that is the sign hyperbolic, right? It, it's a convention people use uh, because uh, U and V are complex. Some people use complex quantities, some people use real quantity. So if it is complex, they use U square minus V square equal to 1. But they both will lead to the same. Yeah, yeah, because it's just uh, the uh, n such that people use. It convention, just nothing else. Uh, there is no well defined. Uh, only thing that they will have to put some condition on that in order to uh, uh, conserve the total density. So you can see that this thing is applicable for very, very uh, small uh, k. So once we have that, then what we get uh, the, that uh, the, this u and v that I'm talking here, it is uh, amplitude in the, in the Fourier space. So uh, to get the real picture of the condensate, I can take the, on the Fourier transformation. Uh, the, and you can see that both the modes are contributing equally uh, for very, very low wave number. Uh, so in that case, what we get, we get the superposed state of uh, uh, and the light and the right going plane wave and the left going plane wave uh, uh, for very low and the wave number. Uh, this kind of feature uh, the, we'll be exploring more in case of the spinner system uh, we'll, we, where we'll get the superposition of the spin uh, state uh, for very low uh, wave number. 
and uh, uh, then we can look at that what will happen for very high uh, k value that uh, in that case uh, you can see for very high k value and, uh, and we uh, for very high k value this term will uh, dominate so uh, so in that case uh, delta will uh, go to zero and once we have the delta go to zero then it becomes like a plane wave so that is consistent with the idea of uh, the frequency that we are getting because for very uh, the, uh, low wave number uh, this frequency is uh, uh, like a phonon uh, in the, uh, frequency and for very high wave number we are getting the free particle. So here for low frequency we are getting this superposed uh, uh, the, uh, state and for high wave number we are getting the solution just like a uh, plane wave. So uh, it is uniformly distributed that was expected because we are using this uh, the homogeneous BEC. So this is the uh, two picture uh, the, uh, through this uh, what we uh, try to the, uh, basically establish that uh, very simple homogeneous uh, BEC system. So what will be the nature of uh, the, uh, this dispersion relation and uh, the, this uh, the amplitude perturbation uh, in, in the different range of the perturbation like uh, this K value de decides the perturbation uh, the, uh, strain. So depending upon that uh, we basically have the complete idea about uh, how the uh, perturbation will propagate in the system and uh, uh, the, how it will behave. Uh, whether it will stabilize the system or it will destabilize the system. So now I come uh, to the topic uh, that I want to discuss in, uh, in the, uh, today's talk that related with the spin orbit coupled uh, Bose-Einstein condensate and uh, in, the, in that case uh, I just uh, want to go through in the quickly about uh, in the, uh, already I find that uh, audience is quite expert in this thing uh, but uh, just for sake of uh, completeness, I just want to go through that we have the, the magnetic moment due to the spin uh, and we have the magnetic, uh, uh, so this is spin, uh, I'm talking about the electron spin. So it can have a two state plus half and uh, minus half state. And then um, the, uh, um, the we have the, um, the, uh, um, the this uh, um, the interaction between the, um, the uh, orbital the uh, uh, magnetic uh, moment and uh, uh, this uh, spin magnetic moment uh, through this uh, in the interaction because uh, we are in the, uh, uh, from the, uh, the electron in the frame of reference uh, in the we will find uh, the presence of the magnetic field. So it already has this uh, in the magnetic moment so that will give rise to some torque and we can define the, in the corresponding uh, magnetic uh, energy like a minus mu dot b where mu is the magnetic moment of electron and b is the magnetic field uh, due to the electron motion about the nucleus. So once we have that uh, then we have the spin orbit coupling uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the atomic uh, in the, uh, system and further uh, in the, uh, we can uh, look at uh, in the, the splitting between any state uh, depending upon its uh, in the angular quantum number and the spin quantum number. And, uh, and J here is the total quantum number and that uh, basically uh, leads to the, the appearance of the fine structure uh, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, atomic uh, spectrum. So here as for example uh, like a, a 3P state uh, and the, we have the, and the uh, state like P3 by 2 and P half uh, and, the, and uh, that can get uh, and the, uh, split into and the P state can get split to P3 half and P1 half. And, uh, because of this uh, fi uh, fine structure splitting and uh, we can exactly can have that idea that what will be the energy difference uh, uh, between this uh, the, uh, fine structure. Then we have the, the interaction um, the, of the net angular momentum J uh, with the, um, the is, is, uh, nuclear spin and that uh, basically um, the, uh, we can proceed uh, with the similar line that we uh, did it for the, um, the spin orbit coupling. And uh, in, the, in that case, we have the mu i that represents the magnetic moment of the nucleus, and b uh, here is the, uh, the magnetic field due to the total angular momentum that is j. So in the, uh, due to that, uh, we have the further splitting between the, in the uh, state, and now in the, uh, this uh, splitting uh, will depend upon j and uh, in the i value. So here, one example is given and uh, we have this spinning uh, and this is splitting and for every uh, f value we have 2 plus f1, 2 plus 2f plus 1 uh, degenerate states. 
So this is corresponding to uh, the, uh, just an example uh, for the rubidium and the, where I is 3 by 2 and uh, J is uh, uh, 3 by 2. So and the, uh, further, uh, and the, if you apply the magnetic field that will uh, and the, uh, split uh, these uh, degenerated states and uh, we have the different states corresponding to uh, this uh, and the, uh, MF value. And what we and the, basically can see that uh, and the, uh, this was the, uh, the state uh, before, uh, the, we, before this uh, 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 hyperfine states. Then we have the splitting between the hyperfine states. And in presence of magnetic field, these hyperfine states again get split. And we have this uh, presence of uh, uh, these states. So, uh, so generally, uh, we'll be mainly uh, interested to look at uh, the things uh, for uh, this ground uh, ground state, ground hyperfine uh, states of uh, this uh, atomic uh, system. Now, uh, coming back to uh, this uh, spin orbit coupling uh, that we discussed, so in that case, uh, uh, due to this uh, uh, Lorentz force, we have the magnetic field from the electron frame of reference and that give rise to uh, this kind of uh, spin orbit coupling uh, for the atomic system. And uh, this spin orbit coupling can be of uh, different type. Uh, in solid state physics, it is generally uh, Rasva spin orbit coupling or uh, Dasselhaus spin orbit coupling. So Rasva spin orbit coupling, you can see, it didn't respect the mirror symmetry, but uh, uh, this Dasselhaus respect the uh, mirror symmetry. So here, uh, the blue basically represent the one uh, up spin, and this one represent the down spin. Uh, and when further we can have the equal contribution of Rasba and uh, uh, Dasselhaus that will uh, generate the spin uh, in one dimension, uh, uh, the spin orbit coupling in one dimension. So, uh, so here uh, we have the spin, uh, the spin orbit coupling as kx uh, sigma y and uh, for this case we have the spin ky uh, sigma, uh, ky sigma x. So these are the whole picture uh, the, uh, for the things that I discussed, it was for atomic system and for materials, there we can have the presence of this spin orbit coupling. But if we look at the things in the spin orbit coupling that arises due to the motion of the charged particle in the presence of electrostatic force and it has on a spin and that leads to this kind of spin orbit coupling. And further, what we see here that uh, th this one is applicable. Uh, this one will be more th applicable for the large velocity and uh, a small mass. Then uh, th uh, this is applicable. But if we increase the mass of the atom, then it becomes uh, uh, quite uh, negligible, and uh, one will uh, have to basically then rely over uh, th generating the spin orbit coupling through some other mechanism. And uh, that is a thing uh, basically th observed. That difficulty being encountered in case of the, the uh, BEC system, uh, which is generally uh, the observed for the very, very uh, the, uh, heavy, heavy uh, the atom like rubidium, cesium, uh, and, the, and there the spin orbit coupling is very, very negligible. And the, so, uh, and the, uh, natural spin orbit coupling is uh, quite negligible compared to the other, other, other field. So, the, uh, so in the, in the lab, and there are different techniques people use and, uh, uh, to generate uh, and, uh, those uh, spin orbit coupling and it popularized with the synthetic uh, spin orbit coupling. And, uh, and the, this field is quite uh, uh, the booming and uh, other area also. And there are different techniques like uh, tripod technique, but here uh, the, I'll be mainly concentrating uh, to discuss about the Raman coupling. Uh, due to that, uh, we have the synthetic uh, and, uh, uh, spin orbit coupling. So here, the, these are three hyperfine states uh, corresponding to uh, the rubidium, and, the, and uh, the, uh, here, and the, this is for uh, uh, the, we are considering L equal to zero. So we have the, the mi minus one, zero, and plus one hyperfine states. Then, using the, the uh, Raman laser, uh, we basically couple these uh, two states and these two states. And, and having this sort of uh, detuning parameter. 
and uh, we apply the, the uh, field in the, the, uh, the in the z direction that leads to this sort of uh, the Zeeman splitting. So the, we have the three states uh, mz equal to minus one that have energy h cross omega z mz equal to zero that is a uh, zero energy level and uh, then we have the presence of this uh, quadratic uh, Zeeman splitting also. So minus h cut omega z minus h cut omega q. So what we can see here that uh, this is a quadratic Zeeman uh, term that basically uh, that we can increase and uh, make uh, this particular state to decouple from other two states. Uh, uh, and it can be done by uh, changing the strength of the uh, magnetic field. So once we uh, do that, uh, then uh, we, uh, this is the, uh, uh, this is the total Hamiltonian uh, in presence of uh, uh, Zeeman splitting and the, uh, the uh, Raman coupling that is already being discussed in the many, many lectures. And, uh, and the, uh, so here KL is proportional to the wavelength of the Raman lasers that we are applying. And, uh, and the, uh, so through that basically we get uh, this sort of uh, Hamiltonian. And uh, if we uh, remove this particular state, uh, the, then we have this uh, the, two cross two matrix uh, and, the, and two cross two matrix. So what is being, uh, the, uh, so this is a final form of uh, the Hamiltonian that we get uh, the, by uh, choosing the coupling between the, the zero and minus one uh, the state. So this is the final uh, the Hamiltonian that we uh, the, uh, get. So further, uh, uh, so here whatever sigma x and sigma y and sigma z we are talking about, it is not the, uh, the spin uh, the, uh, operator, it is just like a density operator, and the, uh, but uh, it has the like a poly matrices uh, uh, the form. So that's why we are repainting in the poly, poly matrices notation, but this is generally the density in the spin operator. So now we can make uh, this uh, unitary transformation and uh, that will lead to uh, this sort of uh, the Hamiltonian. So here what we see that uh, the the, the, the spin state and the, uh, that is a pseudo spin state of the particular state is coupled with uh, the, the linear the momentum of uh, the, that state and uh, the coupling uh, the constant here uh, the, is the, simply the strength of the Raman laser that we are uh, the, uh, having. And then uh, we have this uh, the, uh, Zeeman term and then the, the, this is term corresponding to the determining uh, parameter. So this uh, uh, particular uh, implementation was done by uh, Spielman group in uh, 2011, uh, where uh, they were able to uh, basically generate uh, this kind of synthetic uh, uh, spin orbit coupling uh, using the, uh, the Raman laser. So here, what is being uh, uh, shown uh, the, that uh, uh, this is the uh, dispersion uh, curve that uh, we talked for the BC system. So this is for different energy and different uh, the momentum. So what we see that uh, when the, uh, the strength of the laser is uh, quite uh, low, then uh, we are getting uh, this minima corresponding to one momentum. Uh, and then when the strength is being changed, then we are getting the presence of uh, these two minima. And these two minima basically indicate the presence of two um, the, uh, different uh, um, the, uh, density states and that we are calling it up, uh, dressed spin state, uh, um, the up, up prime and uh, um, the, uh, down prime. So here, um, the, uh, 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 this is the, um, the Raman coupling uh, that is being changed and it is measured in terms of uh, omega by uh, EL. Omega is here the Rabi frequency and uh, EL is the, um, the uh, energy corresponding to the laser. So what we see here that uh, if omega is uh, less than uh, four EL, then we get the two um, the, uh, uh, momentum, uh, um, the mo one momentum corresponding to um, the, uh, this up spin and another momentum corresponding to the down spin. But uh, um, the, uh, when uh, omega is greater than four EL, then uh, we have the presence of only one momentum that corresponding to, that correspond to um, the Q, Q not equal to zero. So, um, the, uh, so what we uh, basically um, the, uh, see here that depending upon the strength of the laser, uh, um, the, uh, we can uh, basically uh, generate the uh, de uh, dressed state. So here uh, you can see that uh, uh, for this strength of the laser, when we have the, um, the uh, two um, the, uh, momentum corresponding to the uh, 
uh, finite momentum corresponding to up spin and down spin. Uh, in that case, we have the presence of dressed state. So this uh, up, up prime state can be written as the down spin that has zero momenta and uh, this down spin that has uh, minus two KL momenta. And uh, this down spin can be written as the superposition of this one. But uh, as we uh, basically go to the, the reason where we have the presence of only uh, the one minima corresponding to Q equal to zero, then uh, the, uh, we basically uh, get uh, the, uh, the, the up spin and down spin both have the uh, momentum is uh, near to zero. So in that way, what we see that by tuning the, the laser strength, uh, the, we can uh, basically the, uh, generate the momentum in the corresponding uh, the spin state. Uh, so here uh, they are coupled in that way. So this is the, the things that we can play uh, with the layer strength and uh, uh, can basically bring the spin orbit coupling uh, in, uh, into picture. Uh, so this is the part of the spin orbit coupling and uh, another thing uh, they basically uh, looked at that is the, the thing related with the miscibility and the immiscibility of the, the uh, this up, up, up state and down state. So in that case, uh, for very small uh, omega value, you can see that uh, both the spin states are in the miscible state. But as the strength has been increased, then we uh, clearly see the, the uh, these uh, two states basically the, uh, get separated, and uh, we have the presence of the immiscible state. So these are two problems uh, that is uh, coming from the experiment. In uh, here, what we get, we get that. Uh, uh, in, the, in the dispersion relation, we get uh, presence of these two different uh, the spin orbit uh, uh, coupling. And the, uh, so here uh, we have the, the up spin and down spin, both are, both are having the zero momentum state. And but here we are having the finite momentum st state. So we'll be trying to look at uh, this aspect through the, our uh, excitation uh, spectrum analysis. And uh, we would be interested to see that if we change this uh, spin orbit coupling parameter, uh, the, whether we get this kind of uh, superposed uh, state or not. And, the, and the second thing that what we get here, that depending upon this uh, Rabi coupling, uh, we can have the miscibility and immiscibility uh, in the uh, real space. So there are two problems uh, the, uh, that uh, I'll be talking about, uh, especially in the context of uh, two dimensional uh, spin orbit uh, uh, coupling. So, uh, so this is the, the uh, Hamiltonian. Uh, we get it uh, the, uh, in, uh, for the one dimension. And uh, the, if we uh, the use this uh, the mean field approximation, then uh, we have the two coupled equation. One correspond to the up spin state, and uh, the second one correspond here to the down spin state. And uh, the, uh, then we will have usual uh, this kinetic part and this is the part coming from the spin orbit coupling and, the, and uh, this is the external uh, and the potential. And, uh, and the, this part uh, the, now we have the interaction between the two states. The, so uh, the, this is the term corresponding to the up up uh, the spin split interaction and this is the term corresponding to up down spin interaction. And then uh, what we basically uh, see here uh, that uh, role of uh, this uh, Rabi coupling uh, is to basically uh, uh, to, uh, is to yeah. Which phase? So it will play a role that I'll, that I'll show because uh, the, they are two different things. One is related with the, the, uh, this, uh, 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 spin and momentum coupling and another one is uh, related with its uh, spatial uh, miscibility and immiscibility. So that I'll be talking about explicitly. In the, in the. So now uh, the, you can see that uh, the complexity of uh, the problem now it is coming uh, first presence of this uh, coupling and, the, and the second thing now we have the uh, interaction parameter, uh, extra interaction parameter alpha and beta. So for the sake of uh, the simplicity we have kept it uh, the, uh, 
uh, this uh, up up uh, interaction and down down interaction same and up down and down up uh, same but it can be different depending upon the experimental uh, uh, observation uh, and the, so now what we will be interested here we will be interested to uh, look at the excitation spectrum first uh, for this sort of uh, coupled uh, spin orbit and the bc and the, uh, in the similar line that we uh, showed it for the, the simple uh, bc system Uh, I'm not aware about uh, that thing, but uh, the, uh, what uh, you will uh, observe here that uh, the, uh, this uh, KL uh, and uh, this omega. So you can see here the role of uh, this KL term is to give some momentum to the state. So if you change that thing, then uh, we are separating, uh, the, we, are, we are giving some finite momentum to the state. And uh, role of uh, this omega term is to exchange between the states. So it will uh, exchange the population between the state. So let us look at uh, the, uh, this uh, the, uh, first, what we will be interested now that uh, we will be interested to look at first uh, the, the single particle spectrum. Single particle spectrum we didn't talk in case of scalar BSC because in that case it was quite straightforward. The in, in absence of uh, the, uh, interaction, it will act like a free gas. Uh, so in, the, in that case it was quite trivial. But now what, what we see that uh, there is a role played by this spin orbit coupling and uh, in the, this Rabi coupling and that can also uh, can have the similar effect like a interaction. So it can also make the system miscible and immiscible. So, in the, so in that way, in the, it is uh, in the pertinent here to talk about this uh, single particle spectrum. So, in that case, uh, we are uh, just uh, keeping this uh, alpha and beta, which is related with the, in the interaction strength, uh, to be zero, and uh, we will again look at things for the homogeneous uh, the BC. So, in the, so now, in, the, in presence of two component, up and down, in the, we can write this. Uh, uh, psi, express this psi in, the, in this uh, plane wave form. And uh, once we put uh, this thing into the, in the corresponding uh, BC equation, uh, we get uh, this sort of uh, in the equation again. Uh, in the, uh, so this, uh, uh, this matrix will be of this form that you can clearly see that this is a this term coming from the, in the kin uh, kinetic energy part. This is a term coming from the, in the uh, spin orbit coupling part. And uh, then uh, we have the, the omega Rabi coupling uh, that couples the opposite spin to that uh, the, uh, state. So that's why it is coming here. Then again we have uh, omega and uh, this is the term uh, again coming from the kinetic and uh, spin orbit part. So the, uh, to get the, the uh, so using this uh, the, uh, the matrix we can uh, get the dispersion relation. And uh, now we can see that uh, this dispersion relation will depend upon the coupling parameter in the, uh, KL and omega. So the one thing what we can see here, now again we have the two branch of uh, omega, in the positive and negative branch uh, corresponding to uh, this sign. So if it is omega is positive, then uh, you can see that with uh, in the increasing the K value, uh, this will keep on changing monotonically. So it will be no more uh, interesting. But uh, if you consider the negative part, then you can see that the competition between this term and this term. And this term strength will depend upon this coupling parameter, KL and omega. So beyond a certain value, uh, the, uh, this, uh, uh, this person listen that we have due to the free particle that is parabolic in nature, uh, that will break into the two uh, minima. And that will be interesting because the, in the, that's the thing I showed you in the experiment that uh, uh, beyond a certain uh, coupling parameter, they get uh, this kind of uh, in the transition between the, in the uh, uh, momentum, is, momentum states. So, in the, uh, so here I have just uh, plotted for uh, different value of uh, KL and omega. So as usual, if uh, both are coupling are absent, then this is just like a uh, free particle dispersion relation that we are uh, getting here. Uh, the, but once we uh, the, uh, tune uh, this KL 
in uh, the uh, absence of this uh, Rabi coupling. So what you can see here, one thing, uh, this uh, Rabi coupling uh, later on will show that uh, it just simply breaks the rotational symmetry of uh, the, the Hamiltonian. Uh, so we, we just wanted to check that what is the role played by this uh, KL. So as I mentioned to you that uh, this simply couples the, uh, the linear momentum. So it breaks the, uh, the uh, symmetry uh, the here, k equal to zero. Now uh, the moment this, uh, this will have the split into the two minima corresponding to finite uh, k, so minus k and uh, plus k. And uh, this is the uh, branch corresponding to the positive uh, omega. And that you can clearly see that uh, from here to here, now there is a transition that uh, it was a free particle dispersion relation, but here now, the, as we discuss in case of a scalar BAC, that for uh, the small k, uh, small k in presence of interaction, it should behave like a uh, phonon kind of dispersion, and that we are getting here. Uh, but apart from that, we get the presence of these two momentum st state also by uh, varying this uh, uh, KL value. And then uh, we checked it for the different uh, situation and uh, we get uh, this uh, gap also starts appearing between this positive branch and negative branch and further uh, this negative branch also basically have this uh, sort of minima which is different from here because here you can see that uh, this k equal to zero it is uh, zero but here it, is, it has some uh, finite value. So this was the single particle spectrum and through that uh, uh, we get an idea and the, that what are uh, the, what are the effects of uh, these coupling parameters, uh, and the KL and omega uh, on the single particle uh, spectrum. Once we the, have that thing, uh, then we would be interested to look at here uh, the collective excitation. In case of collective excitation, we'll be again uh, following this uh, and the Boglebov and the answers. So we'll uh, treat this uh, psi j, j here correspond to uh, the different spin state, up state and down state. And uh, now we have the perturbation again in this form, phi j plus uh, delta phi j, where delta phi uh, is again the superposition of uh, right uh, going plane wave and uh, left going plane wave. So once we have that, then again uh, we can get this sort of uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, equation. And you can see here that uh, now the matrix is not quite uh, straightforward. Uh, the, because it has uh, four, uh, it is four cross four matrix, uh, the two component corresponding to one spin and two component corresponding to other spin. And uh, diagonalizing this matrix uh, the, will be a little bit uh, uh, challenging task. So what I basically the, ask you to do that uh, you basically consider, uh, the, this is the mu that you can get uh, in the stationary state. Uh, the, by simply considering psi equal to e to power minus i mu t uh, root n, uh, and then through that you can get uh, this relation. And uh, just try to get uh, this form of the matrix and what will be the uh, uh, H2 value, H1 value, these are given here. So once you uh, get this uh, the, uh, matrix, uh, the further the, what can be done that uh, the, uh, one can uh, find out the, the uh, one can one, one can uh, diagonalize this matrix uh, using Mathematica, you can do it. You can find out the eigenvalue and uh, eigenvector of this matrix and uh, can characterize the, the uh, system uh, behavior for different coupling parameters. So here just I wanted to uh, show you the, that what we uh, basically uh, get here, we are giving some uh, the plane wave perturbation uh, to the system uh, that will uh, correspond to the, uh, some the, uh, real part of the frequency. And uh, the, uh, then uh, for certain uh, parameter value, when we have the presence of uh, two minima corresponding to the two different momentum, uh, in that case, that perturbation starts growing and system becomes, uh, this perturbation becomes unstable. Uh, and, the, and that basically gives us an indication uh, that uh, Yeah, so then that's the thing we are plotting. So here uh, G basically is the imaginary part of this uh, uh, negative frequency. So you can see that once uh, the uh, frequency becomes imaginary, then that solution will grow with uh, time. So any uh, imaginary part, imaginary. Be because uh, we have a two branch, uh, imaginary part will become, because positive branch, there is no point of getting unstable. 
Okay, so only thing what we get, uh, the instability will come because here in the negative uh, branch, we get the competition between the, the coupling parameters and the uh, free particle dispersion release. So, the, so once this uh, negative branch of the frequency becomes imaginary, then we can see that uh, the whatever perturbation we are giving that will uh, grow exponentially with time. And uh, the, then we can say that uh, this uh, the, uh, solution that we are talking here, uh, the, uh, it is a condensed solution that is not stable corresponding to uh, that perturbation. So we have the presence of another solution that we can get only through numerical simulation and I will show you explicitly that what kind of solution we are expecting in the uh, unstable regime. Generally people expect this a stripe wave uh, but we have the presence of another uh, sort of solution in the, uh, in the spin orbit coupled to the, in the bose einstein condition. So here what we saw that we consider the, the KL equal to one, alpha, beta, the interaction parameter one, and then we vary the, the Rabi coupling uh, parameter. So the, what we can see here, uh, KL, uh, the, this is one. So once the, this omega becomes less than KL, that's the thing we also got in the experiment that once omega become less than four KL, uh, the, uh, four EL, then we have some sort of, uh, the, uh, and different solution than the plane wave solution that was uh, coming in the, uh, into the picture. So here we get the similar thing uh, for one dig system. You can see here there is no presence of imaginary part of the, in the frequency uh, for omega equal to one. Further uh, in the decrease in omega, in the, uh, uh, what we can see that uh, in the, this is the range of wave number in which we get the unstable solution. The, and this uh, uh, range basically keeps on increasing uh, as we further decrease the omega. Uh, the, so in that way, uh, the, through this analysis, we get an idea that uh, this particular uh, the excitation uh, spectrum, uh, the, whether it is stable or unstable, and uh, also we uh, get uh, here the, the information that uh, uh, for some omega, uh, this is stable for certain range of uh, the, uh, k value, and then uh, this basically expands. But this one is uh, not quite uh, linear uh, when we uh, vary this uh, KL by keeping uh, this omega to be fixed. So here uh, you can see that uh, for uh, omega equal to, uh, for KL equal to 2.5, uh, we get, uh, the, this is the range in which we get the instability. Then in this range it is stable, but again uh, for high wave number we get this uh, instability. So all these features are coming because of uh, the dimensionality or problem here we are talking uh, one dimensional uh, system. So, uh, so now again, uh, if we look at uh, further values, then we get uh, uh, different range of K in which uh, the, the solution is uh, unstable. And uh, this is the, just the, the uh, phase space that in different value of uh, alpha and beta, this is the interaction parameter and the different value of coupling parameter omega and KL. Now, depending upon the strength of the, the uh, in the uh, imaginary part of uh, omega, we can uh, decide that whether the, in the con uh, condensate will be the stable comp uh, in the when we give this plane wave perturbation or it will be unstable. So this is the unstable regime and this is the stable regime. Similar way, here we can see that uh, in, the, in this band it is uh, stable, this band it is unstable, but again in this band it becomes stable. So different uh, in the parameter regime, we are getting uh, different sort of uh, features. So in this way, we can uh, explore the things in one, uh, one dimension, but uh, and so far it is very difficult to get uh, the spin orbit coupled BSC in one dimension. So it is not so interesting, but nevertheless, we can get uh, some insight uh, about the system by doing uh, this uh, simple analysis. So now I'll uh, uh, basically move to our next uh, uh, discussion. Uh, so we'll be talking about the elementary excitation now for two-dimensional uh, spin orbit coupled uh, BEC. So in this case, uh, these are the, uh, the dynamical equations that we have. And uh, we have the spin orbit coupling. Now it will be the equal uh, the, uh, contribution of uh, Rasba and uh, Dasselhaus uh, spin orbit. So it will, uh, the, it will basically have both the component, uh, X component and the Y component. And uh, the, that we can uh, basically uh, get it from here. And again, we have considered uh, the, the up-up interaction and down-down interactions to be same. 
and similar way up down and down up interaction to be same. So in this case, uh, the, uh, first we wanted to uh, get an insight about the different sort of uh, the ground state that we are having by uh, changing the coupling parameter. Because uh, the, I mentioned to you that uh, the, by doing this uh, uh, excitation spectrum analysis, what we get that in some range, we are getting that perturbation is stable, some range it is unstable. But uh, uh, through excitation spectrum, we cannot have an idea about uh, the, the, the ground state phases that we will be getting because uh, this is just a linear perturbation that we are uh, using. So for that, uh, the, uh, we perform this uh, the, uh, numerical simulation using uh, coupled Gauss-Petersky equation for two dimension. And uh, the, uh, these are for the, the uh, diff, uh, this is for the up spin state, uh, ground state phase. This is down spin state. And this is the total the, uh, the density. And this one is the uh, phase corresponding to total density. So the, uh, here, what we uh, basically get that uh, we have first uh, kept our uh, Rabi coupling to be zero. And uh, then we vary the, the uh, spin orbit coupling um, the, uh, parameter KL. So for a small value, when we have the stable solution, uh, then you can see because uh, omega is uh, the zero. So for a small value, one, once we have this uh, the KL equal to 0.2, then we get uh, this simple uh, the plane wave kind of uh, the solution. So it is. Uh, uh, the, uh, bright soliton. So you can see here that in the middle it is uh, in the, uh, in the, it is maximum and then it uh, fades away. It's a Gaussian profile that we are getting because we are uh, uh, applying some confinement in the uh, harmonic uh, oscillator confinement just to make the condensate stable. But if you remove the confinement then it will become plane wave. So in the, uh, further uh, if you change the KL now we start getting uh, some uh, interesting feature. Once you can see that once uh, the, uh, KL becomes larger than omega, and that was the situation in, in the experiment, then uh, they start getting a different sort of uh, dispersion relation. Then uh, what we get, we get this half quantum vortex state. Uh, so this uh, plane wave uh, the solution is uh, no more stable. And uh, in this case, we get the half quantum vortex and further increase leads to uh, formation of uh, stripe pattern. So instead of uh, uniform in the, uh, in the density, now we get the stripe uh, in the, uh, kind of uh, density in the system. And this will also have a different sort of pattern. Like you can see here, uh, the, uh, in this case, uh, stripe is in the vertical direction. Now it has uh, this tilted behavior. So that's why we are calling it a stripe wave uh, two solution. So overall, what picture we get here uh, the, that uh, the kind of regime uh, that was discussed in the experiment uh, in which uh, they were getting uh, this coupling between the, the uh, spin and the momentum. Uh, and the, uh, so for the finite momentum case, we have the presence of different sort of states. So it is not quite uh, uh, trivial uh, to claim about uh, the presence of different states through excitation spectrum. But through excitation spectrum, we get uh, some idea uh, about whether this particular state will be stable or not. So the, this half quantum vortex, we have just uh, verified using this uh, phase diagram. So uh, here, once you basically complete this uh, the circulation, then instead of uh, the, uh, n, n equal to one, we get uh, n equal to half uh, change in the phase. So, the, uh, further, um, the, we did it for the different uh, value of the coupling parameter. So we considered uh, the omega equal to uh, 0.5. And uh, the, for, uh, once we switch on the coupling parameter, then you can see that uh, uh, this uh, plane wave uh, the exists where we have the stable solution. But in the unstable regime, again the solution changes. So it, it depends upon uh, presence of the Rabi coupling or uh, whether it is present or it is absent. So in that case, so we get the presence of half quantum vortex, uh, elongated uh, plane wave, but we also get this kind of intermediate uh, in the, uh, wave, uh, in the, like elliptical kind of uh, the, uh, this condensate. Uh, that was absent when uh, uh, this omega was uh, uh, zero, or the right frequency was zero. And uh, further, for high value, we get uh, some different pattern of the stripe wave that we are calling it uh, in the stripe wave uh, three. 
So uh, through this, uh, I just wanted to convey the kind of complexity that we get once we do the full numerical simulation, uh, that uh, the kind of regime that uh, we are talking from uh, the excitation spectrum point of view unstable, that regime has a different uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, presence of uh, ground state. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, that is uh, not quite accessible in the experiment, but uh, numerically, we can tune our parameter and can get the, the behavior. Because in experiment, generally, they uh, get this kind of uh, stripe pattern. And the, all these patterns that I'm talking about is still not accessible uh, in the experiment. So then, uh, this was for uh, the different uh, strength. So we uh, the first considered that uh, the, this uh, up up spin interaction one and uh, down on spin interaction one. But then we considered beta to be very, very high. And, uh, and uh, in that case, again, uh, we get the, the different sort of pattern. Again, what we see that even for a small KL value, now the plane wave solution that we are getting earlier that has uh, uh, changed. And you can see here that uh, we are getting some annular kind of region. Here, the density is zero, and then we are getting this annular region for one component. But if you look at the total density, it is like a plane wave uh, solution. But there is a uh, phase uh, and the change that is coming uh, and the, uh, here. So and the, depending upon this, uh, so what we see here that either we can uh, tune this uh, and the omega and KL or we can tune this interaction, both uh, have some uh, the different effect in the uh, system. So, the, uh, so overall, uh, we uh, wanted to basically understand uh, the role of uh, this coupling parameter uh, and the, to make the system miscible and immiscible and the, for a given uh, interaction strength. So what we uh, basically did that uh, we the, uh, computed uh, this uh, psi up and psi down and then we defined that uh, miscibility using this uh, formula eta. So what you can see that if, uh, the miscibility means that if both have the overlap then you can see both are the same quantity and it will give you miscibility equal to one because uh, it is normalized uh, in the wave function. But if it is, uh, it didn't have overlap, then uh, uh, the place where one uh, state is there, other state is not present, so that will be zero. So the, through that we can identify whether the system is miscible state or immiscible state. So if it is, uh, eta is equal to one, then we can call it uh, in the, uh, in the miscible state uh, if it is uh, zero, then we can call it immiscible state. In between that, it will be intermediate state. So basically overlap. Overlap, yeah. Overlap between the two states, yeah. This is the way we define here because... Uh, they are completely separable, this is completely separable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in the, uh, so in that way, in the, uh, we basically define it here and this is the definition because here we are using the spin state. So we also define some sort of polarizability that uh, in which direction uh, and the spin is aligned, although it is pseudo spin, but we define using uh, this particular uh, the formula because spin uh, is directly proportional to density. So we uh, consider the difference in the, in the density in a particular region and then we uh, and the integrate it over the space uh, to get the total polarizability. So here, what we can see that uh, the, uh, once we have this. Uh, the, uh, omega and KL very small value, then uh, it is uh, this uh, uh, miscibility parameter is zero. So it is completely uh, uh, immiscible. And uh, once we basically move in this direction, this is the uh, uh, omega equal to KL direction. So you can see that uh, we, uh, we go from immiscible state to the miscible, uh, 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 immiscible state to the miscible state. So uh, uh, that particular, uh, uh, through these studies, uh, we are able to uh, uh, get a, uh, a clear picture about uh, uh, the system that uh, was observed in the experiment that uh, depending upon this omega KL, they get this kind of uh, miscible and immiscible state. And uh, here also we can define this polarizability that how it uh, uh, changes with uh, 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 different coupling parameters. So now we uh, try to look at uh, uh, some sort of uh, the transition between the miscible and immiscible state uh, by changing uh, the, this different uh, coupling parameter, KL. So we varied this uh, the, uh, KL, 0.21 and 1.5, and uh, this is one minus eta. So if eta will be one, it means that when 
uh, it is miscible state, then it will be zero. So uh, in this range, it is miscible state. And then you can see that uh, it is having some sort of critical kind of behavior, but we are not able to fit it with some exponent, uh, same exponent. So we are not call, we calling it some phase transition, but we are getting that uh, uh, above this, uh, uh, for a given KL, uh, uh, above certain value of omega, it is perfectly miscible, and then it becomes uh, uh, immiscible. And uh, this value basically changes upon varying the coupling uh, parameters. So after talking about uh, the, uh, this different uh, the ground state and uh, discussing. One question, you have to finish off in one more Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm yeah. So, uh, so now I'll be discussing about uh, uh, this excitation spectrum uh, for this two dimensional uh, spin orbit coupled uh, BEC. So in that case, I'll first proceed with uh, the, uh, this single particle uh, spectrum. And uh, here, and the, I have just plotted it for the different coupling parameters. So you can see when omega and G, uh, KL are both zero, then again we are getting this uh, uh, free particle dispersion uh, relation. Uh, once uh, uh, we change the KL value, then you can see that uh, the, uh, although we get the, that it is uh, breaking into the two different minima at finite value of K, but still the uh, this rotational symmetry is, uh, uh, is maintained. So, uh, so this is in the KS direction, this is in the KY direction. In both the cases, we get the, the minima at equal height. But once we change the omega, then you can see that some sort of rotational symmetry is broken. So in the K, KY direction, we are not getting uh, any uh, breaking of uh, these two minima, but in the KX direction, we get the breaking of two minima. And here we are getting some sort of roton kind of uh, feature. Uh, that is also observed in the case of uh, superfluid helium by changing this parameter. So through this uh, single particle spectrum, we uh, get the presence of phonon as well as uh, roton kind of uh, uh, roton and uh, maxon kind of uh, uh, feature uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the system and by changing this uh, uh, coupling parameter. Then in a similar way, we perform the analysis uh, uh, for this uh, uh, collective excitation. And uh, in that particular case, again, we'll proceed with the same kind of formalism. And now you can see it is becoming more messier and messier. Uh, it is now complicated. Uh, and finally, we get this sort of uh, quartic equation on uh, omega. And uh, these are the, the solutions. So uh, what we get that uh, in absence of uh, the even interaction, so when alpha is equal to beta equal to zero, even that we are getting uh, the, uh, some distortion in the dispersion relation because of presence of this uh, coupling parameter. So the, uh, this red line is for the real part of the, the uh, frequency and uh, this uh, blue line is for the imaginary part of the negative frequency and uh, this one is for real part of negative frequency for uh, finite interaction. So what we get here uh, the, that uh, we get the presence of this uh, roton mode, maxon mode, as well as this uh, uh, phonon mode and the, when we don't have any and the, uh, interaction. But once we uh, include some interaction, then what we get that uh, we get the presence of imaginary uh, solution in the omega negative. And that correspond to uh, the instability and the, of the, uh, and the ground state uh, for that uh, sort of perturbation. Further, uh, we uh, calculated the eigenvector uh, in this particular case. So what we uh, basically get that uh, once there is no uh, interaction between uh, alpha, is G, alpha beta is equal to zero, then you can see that we are getting the presence of either up spin state or the down spin state at any value of uh, k. So this we are calling it as uh, uh, density state because uh, uh, this is same like a scalar BEC because there uh, we have the presence of only one state uh, uh, once we have the plane uh, wave wave stable solution. But, uh, but when once we get this kind of unstable solution, then uh, you can see that uh, we get this kind of uh, state where we have the, um, the uh, presence of both the state and then uh, their spin get uh, uh, basically exchange. So uh, in this range, you can see that the presence of uh, up spin state, uh, the down spin state is zero. But uh, for positive value, you can see the presence of uh, the, uh, 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 
of spin state down state will become zero. But in this intermediate value, we can see the presence of both the states. So this we are calling it as a spin state because there is exchange between the, uh, the spin uh, polarity. And uh, the further, if you look at things in the ky direction, it looks more interesting that in this range you can see sort of some sort of oscillation. So there is a exchange between the spin state. So here you can see at this spin state uh, becomes higher, this one goes low. Here it did become higher, this become uh, low. So we get this sort of uh, spin is exchange uh, in this uh, particular range and uh, that is possible for uh, once we switch on this uh, uh, omega and KL. Further, uh, we look at this uh, spectrum uh, by varying the, uh, the Rabi coupling for a given KL. So what you see here that uh, as an experiment, uh, the, for low KL value, we uh, uh, have the instability phase. It means that uh, the, uh, it is not a free particle, uh, the, uh, the plane wave is unstable. And uh, for higher value of KL, uh, uh, we are getting uh, this stable phase. That is consistent with the experiment. And the, and the similar way, uh, we basically analyze this uh, eigenvectors and that again gives us that uh, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the stable state, we have the, the eigenvector that is like a density like eigenvector. But in the unstable region, it is uh, spin like uh, in the eigenvectors. Similar analysis, we did it for uh, by varying the SO coupling. So you can see that the role of uh, in the uh, SO coupling here is to uh, destabilize the system. Uh, in the, so in the, uh, that is again consistent with the experiment and similar behavior of eigenvector we got. And this is the, in the stability diagram that we get in the omega and KL plane. So this is the omega equal to KL square in the line. So you can see that uh, in the, uh, below that it is stable, uh, in the above that it is uh, unstable. And uh, further, we wanted to uh, look at uh, uh, the, uh, the compatibility of uh, this excitation spectrum behavior using the numerical simulation. So what we did that uh, we uh, formed the condensate for a given trap and then uh, at t equal to zero, we released that trap. And then see that whether the condensate is stable uh, in the reason in which we are calling it a stable one. So you can see here that uh, once we uh, the release uh, the trap, then uh, it is uh, basically getting expanded and that uh, shape basically remains constant with time. So that gives us the confirmation that uh, condensate is stable uh, in that particular range because the excitation spectrum we discussed so far that was for the homogeneous case. So we wanted to check it for uh, in the, the, uh, with in presence of trap whether it is uh, giving us uh, the dynamically stable behavior or not. Similar way, uh, if you look at the unstable uh, 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 unstable region, then in that case, what we see that uh, its structure is not stable. So it is, uh, uh, with time, it is uh, uh, expanding. And uh, that, that thing we confirm uh, by calculating a different quantity like uh, 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 its uh, uh, condensate size, uh, then uh, condensate maximum position, condensate density, and then its corresponding energy. And the, uh, once we release the trap, so in the stable uh, in the state, it uh, remains uh, in the uh, stable, uh, it reaches to the steady state. But uh, once we look at things in the unstable state, then we get the confirmation that it is uh, in the behaving in a very unstable way. And that gives us uh, the confirmation that uh, the dynamic instability that we are talking on the basis of excitation spectrum, uh, in the, that is uh, in the quite correct uh, for the condensate. So, so, so far, we started with the very simple BEC system and we look at the excitation spectrum and there we got an idea that for the homogeneous BEC, how the excitation spectrum will behave. And further, we extended those ideas for spin orbit coupled system and which has the different behavior than the normal BEC because here, uh, we have the coupling parameter that can break some symmetry and uh, can make the system unstable even in absence of the interaction. And uh, in, the, uh, in that context, we discussed different sort of uh, in the, uh, instability to immiscibility in the feature by changing the parameter. And also we uh, got to have the, the understanding about uh, different sort of collective spectrum 
uh, that we can uh, get uh, in presence of the spin orbit uh, uh, coupling. And, uh, and the, we have the presence of plane or elongated wave in the stable and unstable regime that we confirmed from the uh, numerical singlets. So with this, I would like to thank uh, the, my collaborators with whom um, the, we basically um, the, finish this works. And uh, thank you for kind this. First part of the